Rabindranath Tagore was a poet, artist, philosopher and a great teacher. He dreamed of creating a garden of learning where children would be the center of attention. Tagore was born in his ancestral mansion in Jurashanko, Kolkata in 1861, four years after India had passed under the British crown. His father, Devendranath Tagore, was a pillar of the Brahmo Samaj, a reformist Hindu faith. The Tagores were an unusually gifted family, but he rebelled against formal schooling and was given private lessons at home from tutors. His father introduced him at an early age to the ancient Upanishad. The one thing the one work which came to my mind was to teach children. The vigor and the joy of the children, their chats and songs filled the air with a spirit of delight which I drank every day I was there. In this atmosphere and in this environment, I used to write my poems Gitanjali and I sang them to myself in the midnight under the glorious stars of the Indian sky. Tagore died in 1941. At the age of 80, in Jurashako, his Kolkata home where he was born. In an incredibly rich creative career, he had written poetry, novels, short stories, dramas, essays and children's literature while also composing over 2000 songs and painting hundreds of watercolors. He inaugurated his university Bishwabharati in December 1921 at Shantiniketan. He dreamt of creating here an international center where the whole world could meet in one nest. The curriculum would include all cultures and educate students in an artistic atmosphere. Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore has given us an instructive short story, The Parrot Strain. It is a satire full of wit and sarcasm and can be regarded as a preface to a revolution in education. Once upon a time there was a parrot. It was ignorant. It sang all right but never recited scriptures and lacked manners. The Raja felt that the parrot must be trained. His nephews were ordered to give the parrot sound training. The Pandit suggested that a golden cage would help since its natural habit of living is poor nests was the cause of its ignorance. The goldsmith made a golden cage. The scribes and pundits wrote innumerable manuscripts to transmit the knowledge to the parrot. The nephews, pundits, goldsmiths and scribes were rewarded with gold and rare jewels. The Raja was satisfied that there was no flaw in the arrangements. As for any complaint from the bird itself, that simply could not be expected. Its throat was so completely choked with the leaves from the books that it could neither whistle nor whisper. It sent thrills through one's body to watch the pro process. The bird crawled on duly and properly except when the morning light peeped, it sometimes fluttered its wings. What impertinence, said the Kotwal. This was not part of his prescribed curriculum. His wings were clipped and the blacksmiths chained the parrot. The Kotwal and the blacksmith were honored with titles. The bird died. The rumor of its demise reached the Raja's palace. With much paraphernalia of trumpets, pomp and pageantry, the Raja came to visit the grand school of education. He called his nephews and asked them, My dear nephews, what is this that we hear? The nephew said, Sire, the bird's education has been completed. Does it hop? The Raja inquired. Never, said the nephews. Does it fly? No. Bring me the word. 
said the Raja. The bird was brought to him by the Kotwal and the Sepoys. The Raja poked the parrot's body with his finger. Only the inner stuffing of the book leaves rustled.